And greetings YouTube gamers, welcome to another episode of Retro Raider, my name is Johnny Retro and welcome to the channel. So nowadays we live in an era with a lot of open world video games. Games where you can easily spend hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay, games with endless stuff to do, games where the main quests are just a small fraction of the whole picture. I'm talking about games like Skyrim, uh, GTA V, stuff like that. And looking back into the 80s, you know, into the era of the NES, uh, games were a lot more simplistic, but what if I tell you that there's a NES hidden gem that it is an open world experience, and that game is Pirates. So let's take a closer look of this hidden gem right after this. So I got this game last month and, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about it. And I must say that as soon as I started playing it, it totally blew my mind away. So this game was released in 1987 by Sid Meier. Very famous name in the gaming industry, it was actually the guy that made Civilization. And it was published by Ultra Games, which is a sub-company owned by Konami. So of course that the theme of the game is pirates. You fight on ship battles, you raid, you plunder, and it is a game where you can easily sunk, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. So the first thing that you have to do when you start the game is to set up your character and your campaign. You get to choose your historical period and your character background. It can be an English adventure, a French privateer, a Dutch trader and a Spanish renegade. And these choices are very important because they will influence the whole game. It has influence on the world map, on the setting, your allies and your enemies. Then you get to choose your ability. Abilities like navigation, medicine, gunnery, fencing, etc. Then of course you have to choose your name. After that, when the game actually starts, there's a prologue. You know, it's just a basic story of, you know, what the whole setting is all about. Then you get to introduce into combat. Combat in the game is called fencing and, uh, you know, this is just like a, you know, a training. Then is where the game really starts. So you start in a town and in this town you have a bunch of different choices to make. You can gather information, you can go into the tavern where you can recruit, you know, crew members, or gather information, or just listen to local news and rumors. And these sources of information are very, very important for your game. You can also visit the governor of the town and, uh, you know, in the hopes of falling into his goodwill. So these are pretty much, you know, the basic stuff that you can do in towns. And after that, you go to the high sea. Now, navigating in high seas are, you know, at first are not very intuitive. You need to pay closer attention to the wind. And you can do that by looking at the clouds and, you know, just move your ship into the direction that you want to go. And on the sea, you can read, you know, enemy ships. You can create contacts with other ships. You can find new land. And don't forget to be careful with the obstacles on the way because sometimes you can just crush into rocks. So sailing is a big part of this game. So if you spot on a ship, you have to be very careful if you decide to attack. Because sometimes you can attack a ship that is aligned with a certain town and you really don't want to disgrace yourself or your name in that specific town. But if you decide to attack the ship, here's what you can do. First you have a pretty much basic ship combat. And if you win that fight, you get to raid the ship. Then is where you enter in a one-on-one you know, -on -one fight, like you know, a fighting game against the captain of the ship. And before the fight, uh, you actually need to use your instinct and uh, you know, choose the proper weapon to that fight. And if you defeat the captain, you plunder the ship. You can gather food, gold, goods, resources, and you can actually keep the crew member for yourself. Now resources, resources are very very important on this game. You need ammo and food, because if you spend a lot of time sailing, your crew can die of starvation. That's right, it's not just about exploration, you really need to, you know, uh, keep track of your resources to keep your crew alive and to keep yourself alive. Otherwise you just die. Now sometimes you can find new towns. And in new towns you can simply enter, you know, if you have a good relationship with that town. Where you can do, you know, pretty much the same thing as the first town. You know, gather information, uh, you know, see the surroundings, recruit more crew members. Or you can sneak into the town and, uh, you know, hope that no one finds you. Now if you create allies along the way, if the governors like you, you can start building your reputation and get rewards for it. You know, rewards from deeds that you've made, which will lead you to meet new characters. Characters that will provide you new information, and you can even get married. 
So you pretty much choose the way how you want to play the game. You know, you can just keep plundering and uh, gather a huge amount of gold, or you can be a famous pirate. But if you decide to end your journey, this is what happens. When you return to a town, you have the option to divide up and plunder. So if you retire, you pretty much, you know, just divide the spoils of war uh, with your crew. And according to your actual journey, you know, from the deeds that you made, it will give you a title and a list of your achievements. But it also gives you the option to continue the game in a higher difficulty. So the graphics of the game, you know, are not very impressive, but you must understand that, you know, it was a huge achievement that this game was made, you know, taking into account the limitations of the NES. You know, sailing can be a little bit frustrating, I must tell you that, but it's a very fun game to play. You can actually use safe states, of course, I mean, the game is massive. And the best part of this hidden gem is that it is a cheap game to get. Even if you go to eBay, you can get this game for 10 bucks. Now, looking back, of course, you know, it, it may sound a little bit strange, you know, to play this game in 2017, because although it is an open world game, I mean, this is an open world game. It is a very different concept from games, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, games like Skyrim and GTA V. But it's interesting to see, you know, that's, that's why I love hidden gems like this. You know, games like Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, Mega Man, Castlevania, those are great games, you know, but they were simplistic games. And to note that a game as massive as this was around at that time, I just think that it is really cool and impressive. That's why I like to talk and discover hidden gems like Pirates. Anyway guys, it was just a quick review, but um, I'm definitely going to take a closer look of Pirates in the future. So please let me know in the comment section below, did you know about this game for the NES? And as always, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to put a like on this video, please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves, take care of the gaming community and game a lot.